Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and welcome to this week's lesson. This week I'm going to show you how to create realistic looking water reflections in the middle of a desert. So this is a technique I've been doing for many years. I've used this so many times and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some dry ground and I'm going to show you how to turn it into realistic water reflections. So what we're going to do is we're going to reflect the environment first of all and then we're going to do a couple of things to add a little bit of ripple, a little bit, more, bit of atmosphere just to add just a little bit more realism. So let's jump into Photoshop and get started right now. All right, here we have a photograph here from Adobe Stock. And if you click in the link below, it go to my website and you can get the direct download to grab this image. You'll have a watermarked version. You can choose to license it or not, but at least you can use it to follow along. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a water reflection in here. This is a great place to do it because it's very dry. And, uh, and I live in California and we definitely need some rain. So let's add a little bit of rain here, even though this is not California. Looks like uh, Arizona to me. All right, so let's go and we're going to grab the marquee tool here and we're just going to click and drag up the top and we're just going to make a selection and I'm just going to pull it down to about here. Now, the reason I stopped there is because see these little plants, I just wanted to just grab the tops of those. It'll just add a little bit of interest. So what we need to do now is we need to copy the selection to a new layer. So we don't want to duplicate the whole layer, just the select area. So with it selected, if you hold down Command on Mac and have Control on Windows and J for Jump, it will copy this to a new layer. So if I hide the background, you can see, voila, that's what we've done. We've copied that little bit. And that's actually going to be our reflection point right there. So what I want to do now is I'm going to make the reflection. So we're going to grab the Move tool. That'll be the V key, or just click up here to grab the Move tool. And now we're going to go into free transform mode. Control T or Command T for transform will get you into free transform mode. And now you'll see the nine bounding boxes around here. And there's different things you can do. But to unlock all the options, right click. And then you're going to see here's all the options that we can do under free transform. And the one we want to select here is to flip vertical. So we just want to take this and make it go the opposite way vertically. So we click and there we go. All right, we're getting very close to our effect now. So what I'm going to do is hit the Enter key to apply that transform. And now I'm just going to hold down Shift to constrain it so it stays in a straight line. And we don't have to worry about lining it up later. And I'm just looking for the bottom here. Let me try that a couple of times there. And what we're doing is we just want to line it up perfectly at the bottom right where we cut it. And I'm looking at this. This is looking pretty good. So that's about where we cut it there. All right, so what we've done is we've prepared now the part of the image that we're going to use for the reflection. Now we're going to expand the canvas to see the entire image, and then we're going to make this reflection look more realistic. All right, so what we want to do is show everything. When you move this area around there, it's still there. If I um, zoom out, I'm just hitting the option wheel on my mouse, actually, or also I can be using my touch strip on my Cintiq. But if I hit Control T, or Command T, you can see, wow, we've got more of the image under there. We want to show the whole thing. So the way to show that whole thing is actually quite easy. Just select nothing, go up under Image, and then choose to Reveal All. And then when we Reveal All, all the pixels in the entire image will now show. Now, if you want to make it fit on screen, Control or Command Zero will make it fit. There's another couple of ways you can do this, too. If you hit the Hand tool, you double click that will make it fit. If you hit the magnifying glass, that will go to 100% view, double click to fit. So there's a control or command zero or double click the hand tool will show the entire document. Okay, so we've got this, we've got a reflection, but it's, it's not a great reflection yet. All right, we've got a couple more steps to make this look realistic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a blur to this to make it look like there's a little bit of wind and also make it look a little bit more glassy. So what we're going to choose is the filter blur and then we're going to go to the motion blur. Then under motion blur, you can see I've got that set to minus 90. So make sure you have that straight up and down. A tip, if you hold down the shift key, this will constrain it to 45 degree increments, makes it easy to get it straight up and down. And you can see that distance is set to 14. If I turn it all the way off, you can see it just looks too, too clean, too good. To a little bit here, we can just have a very, very mirrored kind of a look there is about 10. 
or you can go higher if you want to have you know more of a glassy look there we're at about 27 there so it really depends on the look that you're going for and really it would depend on you know how much breeze is in there although we're not adding any ripples yet but we'll do that later so I'm gonna take this up we're gonna give it a little bit of reflection maybe at about 17 maybe 20 about there 18 is good click OK so we're most of the way there don't give up yet because we've got a couple more steps and we're gonna make this look a little bit more realistic and also give you more options so let's move on okay so the next thing we can do is we want to add a little bit of shine or reflection or glare we can do that because sometimes with the Sun you still get a little bit of glare even though we've got this perfect reflection so the way to do that is we're just gonna grab the gradient tool so let's go to the gradient here select that gradient and you'll see up the top here I've set this for foreground to transparent make sure the foreground is set to white foreground to transparent make sure transparency is turned on and you see we've got a linear gradient and the blend mode is set to normal the opacity nice right now is 100 we could take that down to about 50 even though we can adjust this later but um, I'm gonna hit the space bar and it just actually I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna start from here and hit this hit the shift key and just pull it up a little bit to create a little bit of glare on the bottom so you can see that we've done that just to add a little glare but before I do that that was really bad let me undo and do a better practice let's create a new layer first all right now we're gonna hold the shift key and pull up and create a little bit of a glare and now by doing that we can adjust the opacity if we want to so I'm just gonna kind of keep it like that because there's a little bit of atmospheric stuff going in here I'm gonna drop it down to about 60 what are we about 63 percent and I think by desaturating that a little bit it gives it a little bit more realism you could also add a little bit here if you wanted a kind of a misty effect it's not really the right time of the day for it but if you wanted to do that let me show you you'll hit the control key and select to make that selection active because we've already blurred it it's not going to be a solid edge it's going to be a softer edge let's create a new layer and I'm just going to pull this back up to 100 and then we're just going to grab our gradient and then just hit the shift key and just pull it down a little bit and hit control D to turn it off now I can adjust the opacity here and you can see we can just give it there we go just a nice little bit of a misty kind of a look or also just a little reflection where that's hitting the short just adds a little bit of realism I've noticed that in a lot of pictures particularly if there's a little bit of moisture in the air in this case with the desert you might not want to do it or if you do just do it very minimal I've got it at about 11 right now and I think that looks pretty good all right so we're almost there the one thing that we haven't done yet is we haven't added any ripples so if we want to add a little bit of a ripple I'm gonna show you how to do that so what I want to do is I want to grab these bottom parts so I'm gonna grab this and just hit control J and what I'm doing is I'm just copying that layer so if we turn off the highlights you can see that it doesn't really matter we can leave these highlights alone but essentially what we're doing is we're just copying the bottom part there and then we can apply our effect the reason I'm copying it is because if it's on a new layer and I choose to mask it out or do some different things to it or change the opacity we can so let's go up under here and we're gonna go under the filters now you might be thinking well okay what filter do we want to go to the distort filter and you would kind of think okay let's go to the distort and maybe grab like the wave filter because we want to create waves um, I found a better one is if we actually go up under the filter gallery then here in the filter gallery the one I want to be using is glass let me just click the minus a couple of times so we can see that better okay so here we are we're creating glass so there's that glass effect and you'll find that under distort under here now under the glass you've got you can see it's right there selected we've got different types of glass and uh, the blocks are kind of interesting there's some different types that are that you know have different things I found though that the frosted here looks pretty good but the canvas to me almost gives a more realistic kind of a water ripple because it doesn't look so painterly like someone was trying to create a watercolor kind of effect so you can play around here with the amount of distortion if you want a lot of distortion you can do that if you want a little less distortion you can pull it back so you can see how you can really change this effect to really get a um, it's a bit of a watercolor effect when you go that far but you could play around with the scaling and kind of get that a bit more realistic by playing around with that but I'm gonna take the distortion down a little bit I don't want to make it quite so bad I want to make it a little more subtle 
Let's play around for scaling. I kind of like that about there. And then the smoothness. If we turn the smoothness all the way down, you get this um, glassy look. It's, it's almost like a frosted glass. If you turn it all the way up, you can see it's much smoother and more ripply. So we're going to find a happy balance in the middle. And uh, I'm going to go a little higher here. I, that's looking better. See, I don't like those effects when it looks too much like a watercolor, because to me that looks a little too fake. So let's just play around the settings. All right, that's looking good. And now I'm going to click OK to apply it. So here we go. So if we look at this, there's a perfectly smooth water and there's a water with a little bit of rippling going on. Now, one of the other things I like to do sometimes is kind of blend this in. So what I'll do is I'll create a gradient. So with that layer selected, grab a layer mask. We've got that layer mask. Now hit our gradient tool. Make sure we're white to black. Go up to the top here and then we're going to select the foreground to background option. And I'm just going to click away. And now what we want to do is make sure it's black in the area that we don't want to include. So we might just flip this around or you could also choose reverse. doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to hold down the shift key and click and drag this way. So if you look at this now and we look at this effect, notice it's affecting it closer but not further away. We could change where it is. If you wanted to just have it here or just here, you can see that if we turn that on and off. It's just affecting those parts. So you can actually choose where you want those ripples to go. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to create this effect. It works on pretty much any image. It's a lot of fun. You can really um, add a little pizzazz to it. One of the things I love to do too is take a cityscape and do this and start to flood the streets and do a fake disaster scene. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, hit the subscribe button. I've got a new tutorial coming every week. And I don't want you to miss out, so just hit that button right now and you'll become a subscriber. It's free and it takes approximately half a second. <laughs> also, add a comment. Um, let's get some discussion going here. I'd love to know what you think of this tutorial and what other things you'd like to learn. Also, check out photoshopcafe.com. I've got a ton more free tutorials on there and also some really great uh, full-length premium tutorials. Uh, don't forget, add a like. Tell your friends about this. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. That's photoshopcafe.com.